uh, welcoming you to this section, this session, and uh, asking you to take us a bit through your journey, uh, so we can start uh, making questions back also. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, I, I, the part of Himalaya, one of the state that we have called Uttarakhand. I am born in this place. I was a professor in a college and uh, I quit job sometime in 90s and thought of working for the community alias. The main tool of service was knowledge, technology, wisdom that uh, we can help and promote. Ultimate idea was to mobilize the local community to make best use of these resources they grow. And uh, best we ensure the better local resources for the local community, their interest in the resources. That ultimately add to the local technology to make best use of them and connecting a rural urban market kind of a scenario. Uh, unfortunately, we have not been much uh, that has not been much used because again the, the government has been doing the same policy of development that we normally have for flatland was also applied in the Himalayan systems. So having a big dams and uh, having a lot of infrastructure in the form of a road going very deep into very fragile mountain system and so the other kind of uh, uh, development had happened and ultimately the cost has was to cost against uh, uh, the government. We believe that we believe that uh, the, unless the local community who is ultimately more responsible towards the local resources, who is ultimately responsible also and make as a source of livelihood from the local resources, connect the community with the resources and once they find resources are very uh, useful and give them advantage. So they, there is no migration. You see that is a common scenario in India otherwise even in all part of the rural India even in case of the Himalayas too the migration has been a chief feature where most of the uh, community have migrated in the urban areas to search a job because they do not find uh, the, the, the the economic opportunity is as strong as in the urban areas and ultimately the Himalaya had to suffer and on the other hand at the same time where there is a migration desolated and deserted villages are seen now and at the same time the big dam we have been building and constructing uh, building and constructing causing a major uh, loss to the nature Himalayas in particularly we have seen that uh, that is one reason we begin to have a technology and a knowledge uh, as a as a tool for community to stay back and make best use of the resources ultimately one few couple of things are very important if you look into the Himalayas they are suffering now the Himalaya as a system it cannot be merely taken as a body of glacier rivers of course the Himalaya has been serving uh, the whole nation uh, by 65% uh, nations population are fed with the water and everything 
from the Himalayan resources and the rivers. And so is the case of the forest produces a lot of timber and many other um, uh, minor forest produce, which help the not only to lake uh, level, but uh, as well the, uh, the, the, the community as well as the whole country. Therefore, the, what is most important that we realize that if Himalaya will not be there, means a lot. There will not be any monsoon. Their security issues will come up. There are other advantage which uh, people have been worshipping Himalaya. They are God abroad. Spirituality is connected with the Himalayas because most of the shrines, important shrines in this country, they are there in the Himalayas only. We are very rich by flowering plant, 8,000 flowering plant species, about 1,700 small uh, medicinal plants. I mean, it's a very rich, but unfortunately, we have not been able to do something which can establish a kind of a sustainability between ecology and economy. We have been harvesting Himalaya, we have been using the Himalaya, but we do not have as such a very strong policy where the ecology and economy can go together. Anything which we are doing is give advantage more to the other than Himalayans. You see, green revolution, white revolution, that all set by, set by the Himalayan resources. You, think, you see, most of the states where the Ganges has been traveling, Yamuna, another river, Brahmaputra, most of these rivers have brought green and white revolution and so many other revolution. But for the local community, these rivers have not been very useful. And uh, give you an example, uh, every season of... Uh, the summer, a lot of tourists come, adventure tourism come, pilgrims come, and they take with them the water bottles. And uh, that, that they, they, their contribution is in a form of a garbage that they do, they contribute that way. And otherwise, the water and river that we have would have made one of the very strong uh, employment opportunity for local use. But such opportunity never have been there. We are richest in medicinal plant resources, but there is no opportunity for local community to make use of these medicinal plant. And so is uh, the case of the many other important resources. What we have been wondering that if this is the pace and the rate of kind of a development that we have decided till date, if it continues, we will be losing fast. The glacier reports are with us now. It's globally also, even in the Himalayan glaciers are receding fast because the global climate warming, which ultimately not the local community contribution, it is more the, because of the urbanization in India and elsewhere too, the climate change, global warming issues. Ultimately, what had happened? See, economic disparity was there because what we have been producing we did not get the advantage of the same. And at the same time, there is an ecological disparity also. Because of the global warming uh, rise, temperature rise, ultimately the flood comes in the Himalayas. And if the flood is coming in the Himalayas, local community had to suffer. Most of the disaster you must have been noting in the last two decades have the Himalayan community had to suffer. Those who are savior of the nature are now the sufferer of the the, 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 because of the others, um, uh, urbanization, climate change kind of issue. So there is an economic and ecological disparity that we are currently suffering. And therefore, we believe that if things do not go well, currently the way it is going, I think we have all fear that we'll have to suffer. And not only the, uh, the Himalayan system, Indian systems, but the flat land people, urban people, where the water is the major source that come from the Indian Himalayan rivers and everybody that take advantage. Ironically, there has not been a single report with us what had happened to the Himalayas in the last hundred years. We do not have any report. How Ganges has behaved, what happened to the Yamuna, what is the forest status, soil, so on. There has never been a report because one direction only that how best the garment or the industrialist can use the resources of Himalaya, which has never been much used to the local community. So that's uh, the how uh, we has as, as, a, as, a, as a group of uh, people, we are all engineers, uh, 
I mean, uh, the scholars have been working on local resource-based economy with the uh, uh, with the hope that we will be able to ensure the community to get a better return from their resources. And for that, several resource-based technology, resource growth are our major intervention so that ecology and economy, once they go together, will see that the migration does not come again because there is a heavy migration from the Himalayas, particularly the state I belong to. So this is how we are trying to do, and uh, we do. We are also uh, the Himalaya. There is a. We really need to understand the culture and civilization. There is a difference. Culture trained you for conservation also. It is age old, whereas the civilization make you more consumerism. And uh, we believe that the culture make history, and the consumerism has make you more hungry, how much we can take, how much we can enjoy. So there is a difference between the civilization and the culture and that we believe that if, if nature is to be saved, because so many sciences, technology we have worked, but yet we have not understood the science of nature, science of Himalayas, science of uh, the ecosystem. We do not know much about it. And that is, if we really need to save that, there are two principles we can think. It is local community only who can save Himalayas. Number one, best and good opportunities. The economic opportunities should also be given in a way where they both things can be taken care of. This is how we are trying to work. How is or is it very hard to be able to have the community supporting your initiatives, the local people? Yeah, yeah, definitely. The reason is simple. The reason is simple. If you are talking something of their interest, first thing. Number two, you are not. You are talking to your to their skill matching kind of a thing. If we, I, I, if I, we talk something which does not match to their skill, and it's not relevant to them, it is immediately they, they don't accept it. The third thing is, it, it, if it is in economic activities, which is essentially resource based in their domain, in their control. Naturally, that generates the interest. And the most important is we cannot change. The, we never wanted to change the Himalayan ecosystem and its um, uh, the, the, the diversity that the community have in agri culture or any other thing which is uh, the part of uh, maintaining an ecosystem. We simply have been upgrading what they had been doing. So that brings the closeness more. If agriculture they work, we are working agriculture. Added and adding the values by improving the productivity and also make a product which is a very brand based which is himalayan brand kind of a thing we do so they are involved and more important which we believe happens that you see the problem is the problem is now even in the himalayas we are the ganges yamuna many major rivers are, are the source or water for the rest of the country, but unfortunately, local community does not have access to these rivers because mountain are up high up land where the rivers are passed through through the gorges. So they do not have any access to that because the river Ganga is made not merely one river; it is a small streams makes the Ganga, and uh, they are dependent on the stream for the water, for agriculture, for everything. What we also involve in our task, recharging these streams through ecosystem understanding the science of ecosystem. For example, where I live, we had a river which was rain fed, but we were losing fast because there was no forest cover. Now what we simply did, we made water holes in the whole water set so that any amount of water go, rain that come goes into the the water holes and recharge the river. It became a wonderful experiment and hundreds of such rivers are now being followed. So it is a inclusive, even you will have to think the forest, water and many, many others. So collective efforts, as I say, there is a difference between the development and the prosperity. We had nothing to do with the development. It is totally a new world with 400, 500 years ago had come. Prosperity means inclusive. Everything you talk when you say the prosper country, prosper village, prosper state. When you talk of prosperity, it includes everything. And therefore, we work on prosperity base 
kind of um, initiative where agriculture is there, animal husbandry is there, and, and also an education also parted, resources regeneration, uh, the natural resource regeneration through ecosystem understanding. So we work on prosperity, not the development of road infrastructure, development of malls. Or, it's a very solo kind of an approach. So what we do is we work on prosperity. And people accept it. For example, working uh, on that prosperity uh, with the community uh, must bring pride and must bring a, 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 posi a positive uh, change both in the economy and in the environment itself and how people deal with each other. Uh, do you notice that, uh, for example, from the tourists, they are able to observe that and appreciate value the work that you are trying to do? Definitely, definitely. Naturally, it's, we, you can only uh, judge uh, your uh, the the work you are doing if the last number of people around that particular intervention are followed by not merely by the other communities, but as well by the state government and the government machinery. Once they also follow it, your intervention may be in one village, two village, three village. But we believe strongly, we cannot become a straight, I mean, a system. System is the state government. System is the national government. We'll have to do something that the the state also follow the same protocol of development. So what no, normally when we work, we work in wholesome, holistic, so that nothing leave behind. And uh, because we, 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 I had a lesson that I learned from the villagers only once I was in a village and I began to, to because I am an environmental botanist. I was talking about how fast we can grow tree, this and that. And an old lady stood up and asked me, who are you? I said, I am a social worker. She said, if you are a social worker, why should you talk forest and trees with us? We are born in a village. We know the tree more than you. Better that if you are a social worker, there is no road coming. There is no hospital. There is no school. That was first lesson in my life. I stopped talking the forest ever since. Because this is not the priority which we sitting on outside somewhere. Begin to think that this is something very important. And women, we always all time make a tool. Women and children, we always make them using in our uh, kind of a, some, this kind of thing. So what we learned from that lady, and it is a very old story, 1982. I learned it and that lesson I never forgot. And that gave us idea. What we have been thinking is totally different. What community priorities are different. Then after, ever since we go in a village or work in a village, we fix First thing, what is your priority? And this organization, which I have come from, does not have any mandate. It has a single mandate. Community priority is, should be the mandate of this organization. So that is the reason we have been fighting with the government. We are working on water. We are working for cattle. Where whatever their priorities are, we are, we are bound to work. So, so normally, that is the prosperity and there is the... Uh, sometimes I find that we sometimes define our organization. We are an organization. We are working this and that and that. No, I think our organization need to be defined in a way. How much are we useful to the community we belong to? We are working for. And their problems are hundreds. So you'll have to work in the hundreds of problems. And that is the reason I have and my team has always been protesting for a couple of things, making a demonstration against the government also, because we cannot... Uh, Deny what the priorities of the communities are, and if they request, we do everything. So clearly, uh, the kind of stuff that you are talking about that the organization is doing, and the fact that you mentioned that you require the state to become part of it. Yes. Do you see any region anywhere in the world where there is a strong participation from the state? You are able to they have been able to create the prosperity that you're talking about and leading to conservation, which seems to be at the core of what you're doing. Well, I do not know other part of it. The only thing is that there has always been a resistance in the system, the government system. There is always, because there is a very bureaucratic way of doing everything. They do not normally easily accept it, but our 
simple way of doing it is that if this if you are known to the community which ultimately make a political leader and political leader knows that 100000 people are behind this organization or or this kind of a leadership at one this is one thing and second important thing your credibility of four decades also keep in loop the government had also been closely observing what we are doing third thing is that if you are working on a system which is some way acceptable not only to the community but also the part of it for example we have been manrega is one of the very famous scheme when i traveled whole country 2008 from kanyakumari to uttarakhand on the way when we were traveling we found many farmers quitting their farming and because of the that time the farmers because of the dry drought that particular year was we found that the farmer would begin to search a job somewhere in the manrega now doing a job in a, making a road we proposed to the planning commission that time that why not manrega be used for regenerating the local resources the agriculture they should be given to way of advantage water harvest etc raising the forest and that was really accepted that time so is the case of the state i am we believe that uh, we believe that we need really need to realize the fact that gdp gdp and gdp has nothing to do with the rural india and globally also had that been very important there would not have been a migration the migration factor is urbanization that we say in the globally contribute more to the gdp and the rural are never taken and never acknowledge their contribution in the so called gdp that is the reason we believe that there has to be another parallel growth measure gross environment product how the water soil forest and the air every year the state should furnish parallel to the so called gdp which with the rural community do not enjoy but at the same time these four factor decide good agriculture good farming forest animal husbandry there has to be another growth measure gross environment product parallel and the gross environment product does not merely uh, uh, ensure the long term uh, in nature conservation but at the same time at the same time it is life supporting resources come from the forest water soil and that unfortunately we do not have we fought here with the state and then ultimately we go, went to the court the uttarakhand the state we belong to first time will give a gross environment product against the gross domestic product the court consented and asked the state government to furnish a parallel gross gross environment product we believe that economy we do not deny with the so called gdp but gdp is bias for a group of people only is a bias towards urbanization and rural community does not have any access to so called gdp and the, the 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 benefits therefore our rural area or rural community in the himalayas need first thing better resources access to the resources and a knowledge and a technology and everything i am to tell you that any village you go today even they are prosper the the level of prosperity the profile may be low but prosperity they talk they have animal husbandry they have agriculture they do energy issues the only thing is that intervention we have to see the whole system be pushed up by knowledge technology and the wisdom that they have but the wisdom help in uh, uh, the, 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 there is always a very clear thing to understand that wisdom came since ages and new technology is today born so normally what happen when we take up a technology and go in a village maybe skill not matching maybe not affordability part of it no services are available what we do wisdom and new knowledge we combine together the relevance come and participatory research decide what should be the kind of a shape and the nature of a technology that is how we have been doing and i believe that prosperity is all time there in the villages it is we who broke this prosperity and the profile had further gone down and ever since the urbanization came everybody want to migrate in the flat land or in a place where there is more and more opportunities so we believe we are working on that line anil ji uh, are talking about migration 
you know i am a teacher in a design school and oh. uh, it's a it's a sort of you know campus where pe- children come from all over the country to study in ahmedabad the national institute of design and um, one of the things that has happened during lockdown is ki everybody has gone back home so we are you know so they are studying but they are at home and because of that we find this really uh, that they are now becoming connected to all the issues that they see around them and in fact i've had many conversation one with a young person from shimla district who's talking about you know how he's noticing that uh, this disconnect between you know local um, sort of development needs and the tourism economy uh, that exists in the in the state of himachal pradesh uh and and they are and these young people are you know all wondering what they can do about it um and i was wondering if you look you know how do you feel that education especially you know higher education should actually support uh young people who have aspirations for thinking about local development and want to go back thank you very important thing you raise you know i don't believe the kind of education system that we have today the first thing it does it dissociate you from your village you begin to search a job in this other place the education must be very kind of inclusive the first thing we really need to teach local community local children local youth that the kind of resources they are born with what is the uh, advantage of their resources which everybody enjoy and make a big big industries around i am to tell you that we are richest in the medicinal plant resources but the industries are located in mumbai or in places bangalore now the issue is the kind of education that is uh, something you teach a b c d you teach very mathematics but you do not teach the children or the, uh, the coming generation i mean youth that what are the possible resources i go give an example to you that can't we have water bottling in the bank of ganges which can bring the millions of rupees to the youth it's a local resource and otherwise it is imported from the delhi places noida and the bottle come right from the south to the north for example because we never train never try to do an education where we teach them about the local resources and that is the first time i'll appreciate this time this education policy that currently we are trying to put there is a content there is a part of it where you are the children will be exposed to uh, the, the 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 different resources around i give you very good example, good example of uh, education one of the i mean very famous school in india which is here in uh, uh, dehradun i mean we set the political industrial and every things in the country when i was talking to the children i simply asked them what will happen if the water will not be there because the water is ultimately nature produces it comes from the mountain one child one of the student raised the hand i was taken aback what answer kind of answer is giving what he would drink uh, in in place of water he said i'll drink juice now if this is an education which teaches you if there is no water you can take juice so if he is not that it is the kind of education that we are trying now important is with the beginning i said resource based education and i will thank corona in some way or other that two things happened during the corona everybody begin to remember their own village because it was very safe secured let us go at least the food we will get and second important thing you know the whole time of lockdown everybody used to say that are sab bahut acha hai so very good whole uh, sky is very clean you can see the star whole universe is visible clean ganga quality air everything lockdown open everything came back so the corona realizes the fact is that if tomorrow another corona brother come again that fear will take back the villagers Uh, those uh, migrants back to their villages so this opens a opportunity us to explore 
that what possible kind of resources available in the any ecosystem or any agroclimatic zone can be connected for the job for example local youth and everything and that be rural urban connectivity the consumer urban are consumer and rural are producer if that connectivity will come you are very right for example we have so many resources bamboo lantana and many many fibers that we are rich with but we do not know good about the best use something coming up now but i am talking because my experience is four decades uh, old so i know that we were devoid of many a thing many knowledge which the other people had i am to tell you very honestly we otherwise are very rich in resources we have so many varieties of fruits available wild fruits are available many things that we have we can have a water mill floor we can catch the market uh, readily there are hundreds of things but you know the problem again the education kind of education we did um, i, I curse it and um, i believe that if we go into different uh, way and those migrants have come up um, many migrants that we are involved with they are doing a very good farming now because their urban exposure is an advantage to us as you said their urban exposure we can take advantage of it with doing farming they are doing many other things food processing they are doing and let us hope this is the um, corona blessing i'll call it said they came back and they know they are better exposed they can connect uh, where they have come from people and urban for consuming the product we can we are making in the himalayas so what is the capitalist connection to the organization because you say that you know everything eventually is driven by capitalism and consumerism so how do you as an organization kind of create that bridge but the only thing is that there are two ways we have been doing we are currently the part of two important organization of the country department of science and technology because science is a tool where they allow us to do some innovation and uh, second is the department of biotechnology where riches in bio resources our organization is have initial science resource support from them number one number two when we develop a technology we take in the villages at the same time anything that they villager have been producing we have an intermediate youth marketing these produce so for example there is a youth group culture valley and there is one uh, another uh, group who is doing the local marketing of the produce in a big way so what we have different stakeholder you know an organization weaknesses normally happens that if we are not uh, holistic in approach we do not take other stakeholders in the loop so we will be losing somewhere so what we have been trying three ways our marketing strategy number one local kiosks we equip because the travelers come they are attracted through the product that these are very natural and at least corona time again another blessing people want to eat a very local very indigenous <laughs> we take advantage you are full of immunity we will become a full of immunity if you eat our product second is an intermediary group of youth who are marketing the produce in the close urban areas and third we believe that and the first time it has happened the community local also used to incline on in and for falling when they fall ill they had also been trained by us early i mean during this team that take english medicine but the first time the people begin to realize the importance of the local plants and they can be uh, the immunity booster the local millets contribute a lot thanks to the uh, various so called industries who source this knowledge and begin to sell their product by saying immunity booster we also made a rural immunity booster and we will be have an added advantage being called rural because people say will not be much of the adulteration otherwise everybody knows everything is adul adulterated we take advantage of that and ultimately community when they stay back they maintain forest they maintain stream they maintain water and everything and that surplus goes to the weavers and ultimately weavers serve the country because sustainability the word that came in the stockholm 
I do not understand at all. 1972, Stockholm Sustainability. Everything is sustainable ever since. We thought, tell me one thing ever since which became sustainable. No river we have, glaciers are melting, and, and ultimately the soil is lost, forests are lost, and everything is lost. So what is the sustainability? And even today, United Nations would say sustainable development. And every project you talk in India or elsewhere, sustainability, sustainability, nothing is sustainable. And even if we lose this sustainability for so-called economy that has, is not even sustainable, GDP disappeared. There is no GDP. I do not know. We have to search where that hell this GDP had gone to. It is not coming up because everybody is globally the GDP had. Uh, was uh, we lost GDP growth. So the issue is, what is the sustainability? Sustainability should be defined. Subsistence. First of all, you fill you, your need. Produce surplus. And then when you have a surplus, you share with others. Then only you will be called sustainable. And which is not happening otherwise. Any more questions uh, in a few more minutes uh, we'll have a question and answer censure with only the guests so i will give you uh, these last minutes uh. thanks i just wanted to say that ki, uh, exactly this you know this because of this corona situation and young people going back to their own villages their native place I have one young person who's actually started thinking about rural futures. And I was wondering, <laughs> you know, and he's conceptualizing this he thing that, you know, there is something called futures, but rural future can be different from, you know, urban future. And I was wondering what you would think about this idea. Yes, yes. Let me tell you the answer to this. There is only future now in the rural. He should have the only future is rural, he should have said. Because under Delhi is no more, Bangalore, Ahmedabad, you can't, you're suffocating with the kind of uh, air that uh, we used to say, this is the air which saves your life. Now the same air killing your life. How protected are you? So if uh, there is a future, it is a future in the rural also. So this anti-migration uh, is good in my opinion. Let all those strong and come back with the new knowledge and urban exposure. Hopefully, they will be doing well, in, I believe it. And uh, that's a good thing you told me. So I'll begin to say now, the future is rural only. <laughs> Thank you. No more questions? So I'll... Uh... I have a few questions that uh, I can introduce and that might help in this conversation even more uh, when it was talked about the government influence. And uh, one of the questions is, you have been awarded a Padman Bhushan. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying pro uh, the right way. Do these national accolades really help you accelerate in your path to progress? Does it make a change, uh, this kind of recognition? People come yes, forward yes, to help yes, you. you. See, these are, uh, I'm not very serious about if I'm awarded something. My award comes from the villages if they take it, number one. Definitely, if there is an award comes, uh, it uh, encourages uh, people around you. Maybe that uh, Neil Josie have turned mad working for such issues, but at least the team that we have, feel very happy and also uh, trust, trust that the kind of team that we have are doing something, number one. Number two, definitely the state government also take attention of the work we do. And then uh, being uh, this uh, kind of an award, you can pressurize as well. And they somehow bound to listen to you for up to some extent, up to some extent, not beyond. So they have been hearing you in that case also. So it gives you help and ultimately it's a national honor. And I'm born in India and uh, Bharat. So I think anything come from my nation to me, uh, it's an honor and uh, I respect it. I respect it. 
And for example, from the many hats that uh, you wear uh, with your uh, job, w which one would you say that is more impactful or can bring uh, uh, more changes? Activism is the education closely with the locals, is social science? I think uh, because basically we believe that the uh, the kind of work we all doing should be taken in wholesome and ecosystem. So ecosystem growth is the most important. And the first thing which we have been able to do is to connect the resources and their applications for the welfare of the local community. And uh, as a result in many places, the migration we were able to affect. Uh, and secondly, second important is that one of our work is very popular and I am, we are all proud of it that we have been able to improve the river which was almost dried and there is a water back and we, what we have been using uh, to recharge the river through uh, uh, bringing uh, something which was uh, pro-ecosystem and we were able to bring the water back to the river. Once the water came in the river, the same river were used by the water millers to grind the floor, generate the electricity. And that same river were able to irrigate more and more land. Command area increased and the water access has gone up. So we believe that we should not work uh, in a scattered manner. I mean, if we only work for agriculture, we forgot about forest. We shouldn't do that. It has to be inclusive. And I think that the major feature of uh, our work is that it's inclusive in approach. When we work in a forest, we work on the fire also that uh, cause a lot of loss. Uh, and then uh, we also care of the community, which some way or other connected with the forest for their uh, many various needs. So inclusive approach that we will say uh, is the way we have been working and that uh, we believe is the only way of doing it. I was uh, thinking uh, right now because I, I'm trying to, in a very small stage yet, uh, a sort of uh, project but for the coast to deal with the honey pot that tourism uh, uh, creates and affects both uh, ecology and both how the villages behave culturally to the point that they might become obsolete and again uh, migration is the the only solution uh, so in that sense and also because uh, i'm a designer and uh, i read the, about uh, the skills room trying to develop with the artisans that, that you've been uh, working and influence more than 900 uh, artisans. Uh, for me that I'm a foreigner, it's not uh, very easy to approach and, and uh, take things forward because there's already certain barriers that uh, are subconsciously created too. Uh, and before you were mentioning that the best way to interact is to keep it at a level that they have understanding and they have skills so they can uh, contribute uh, for that challenge. In, in this sense, when uh, uh, I'm trying to start new projects with villages, what else you think is as relevant as that uh, level of communication so we can create things together? Definitely, what I was always wondering that we should look for an uh, tourism or uh, which should essentially become uh, two ways. When I say two ways, if we contribute, somebody is coming as a tourist, so to ensure that some contribution in the village. Otherwise, they only create a garbage, not merely a garbage. There is another garbage they also bring. They have been bringing liquor. They have been bringing something which caused the whole social, many other taboos that unfortunately had come. So the, it has to be contributory. Currently, if Himalaya have to be saved or rural India 
or rural world have to be saved the tourism it should not only merely be a very romantic way you come and do everything you think up on the mountain take a round and go back no it has to be very contributive and an example really need to be set if i am coming as a tourist not merely 2 3 4 days or anyway if my within my limitation i contribute one way or other how i can contribute what is the knowledge that we have and how we are going to contribute that and then enjoy that place also so as you are trying to point out the tourism is a very economy generating thing in the mountain there are various kind of adventurous adventures tourism river rafting and what is not happening but if you look into the what is the contribution they are doing you will find zero if they are contributing in a form of a uh, some money monetary term but it does not add values to the ecosystem so anything ecosystem include the community also anything we come add the knowledge to the artisans or anyone whomsoever we contribute if we are may i mean agriculture is i contribute to the agriculture if i am a forester i should do that and if i am not that anything so what i can contribute i can consume the rural product and ensure that the village i have visited or community i have worked with i'll consume their product so that both ways uh, contributory <clears throat> mechanism need to be developed and uh, i think we welcome all such people who are want to do and we work out that how best both ways the uh, we can make contribution you come contribute and then community contribute for you or the himalaya contribute for you <coughs> that is the only thing we can sustain himalayas on i think if not, we will won't do it we will not be able to afford any tourism in future there will not be any river rafting there will not be any other adventure adventure tourism and we will things will disappear yeah i think sometimes we we have uh, not uh, a conscious idea of how serious uh, things are getting right now uh, but i believe for example like you were saying before in terms of inclusivity uh, to reach that prosperity if the experiences for the tourists are created in that sense that they can contribute Uh, uh be the experiences be inclusive of that cross learning to be possible to uh to happen we, we could have we uh, some change uh, at least in the perception of the importance uh that is right now yes yes because they also will learn about the ecosystem the values of himalayas the culture the conservation they will understand if we make uh, this kind of uh, uh, the tourism but uh, that doesn't happen that does not happen there are few only would appreciate this kind of contributory tourism kind of a thing there are a lot of synergies that have to go hand in hand like you said yeah, right. the focus can't be one thing or the other because at the end of the day it's going to be a long process it's going to be there's no other way so if we start leaving things behind because these are more important at the end we have a broken system like we've been having uh, until the day where are you belong to i'm portuguese but i'm based in goa for the, these projects i have a social change accelerator okay, okay. Yeah, right, so, right. that's wonderful that's wonderful well i believe that unless we make make everything very contributory and uh, i don't think we will be able to so called sustainability which we are trying to bring i don't there won't be any possibility for that it has to be contributory anyway on himalaya there is a there are problems in himalayas several uh, problems and uh, most of the catchment areas do not have forest cover ultimately the rain, rain that fall immediately cause flood down in the plains the species that we in himalaya chid pine is the major species which does not contribute anything to the ecosystem so the road that we have been building uh, the same technology used for building a road which we are doing in the flat land or the in urban places 
the fragile ecosystem does not only we lose uh, the road but all hill where it passes through also comes down that is the major problem which we currently are facing so uh, that's the one issue and i think i think uh, this is how uh, you know what i strongly believe ecology a common responsibility and it has to be it is not a garment only you can think of a ecosystem why should because every individual who consume nature or nature product should have an ecological responsibility towards the nature it does not mean it doesn't you should not wait for any law to come when an act will that decide that realize you that you have to contribute if you consume you have to contribute and unless it become a common responsibility whether it is a tourism whether x y z anything i don't think we will be able to do much and contribute much towards i, I believe have that. one last uh, question for you uh, i was remember uh, how you mentioned uh, that lesson that you learn uh, with that lady after uh, uh, being in school and being a professor uh, uh, with the knowledge on the plants as a botanist and then realizing that uh, there's way more than that because the locals have that knowledge too and for you to come and contribute it would have to take to another level so other phd students that uh, are focusing and trying to figure it out these big issues and might get too focused on the team what would be your advice for them to make the right questions at least yeah, the only thing is that uh, it's a very it's a very common issue the most of the scientists in india and elsewhere wanted to publish their paper in international journal and then they only get an recognition we really we have to do that the students working in the rural area equally get recognition exactly the way an international magazine has been publishing a research paper that is one way of doing it and the second important is they really need to mobilize and we have people coming my own students who did phd with me are with me for last three decades they did not opt for any they were, they were motivated mobilized they understood the issue and that can only make things better so well this is a very important and international issues everybody want to go to the moon and uh, the mars so want to do that kind of research so the research relevance is a issue for the rural india but whether they find it attractive for them so what we have been trying that the students are also coming here we have been doing the internship we are mobilizing and then find that the last one decade we have been able to uh mobilize the them to do and work uh, because many interns when they come here they are given a task to do some innovation or intervention for rural community and they find it very attractive and interesting also so i think that can only be the way out currently but i think we should be very serious at the institutes level also the big institute that we have in the country must see that uh, everybody gets something uh, where the rural uh, things attract them so yes that's a challenge that's a challenge Dr. Anil, I want to thank you to be from being part of this session. And uh, now I guess you are going to be part of a panel and continue to share this knowledge. Hopefully, it will affect more of us into a positive change. So thank you, and talk to you tomorrow.